that's how you program one of these. Um, functionally, the only things that I change are odometer, miles per hour, and then any of the battery calibration there. I'm gonna walk you guys through how to program this CT22 display module here. I've already done the programming, but I'm gonna modify some of the voltage ranges, and so I'll walk you through that process. I'll explain the other parameters as well, but what you'll do is if you wanna turn on and adjust the clock, you can hold this button down and turn that key on. Pretty simple process. I wanna focus on instead programming the parameters for speed, battery, voltages, um, things of that sort. Really those are the only two that I messed with. Um, it's actually got a pretty involved battery percentage programming process. So I'll walk you through that. So hold this button down as you turn the key on. Brings me to the programming menu here. The code's the same for all of these. It is 6610 from left to right. So you actually gotta enter it backwards because it takes you through it from right to left. So you hold this button down to shift to the next one and you just punch it the number of times you need to to get it to the value that it needs. You hold that down and it takes you to this next screen. The first one, which is designated as zero, um, is the ratio of speed for the speedometer display. And so this is actually a strange formula based on hall angles and the rotational speed. For me, I just use it as trial and error effectively. I went ahead and did the number um, if you go up or down, it just changes and you figure out which direction it is. I ended up landing on 141 for my wheel diameter and the motor that we used. Um, the next option on here, which you just punch this once to go to the next one, this is for the odometer. So obviously you want this to be the same as your speedometer, which means that the miles per hour and the mileage you're accruing match. The next ones, two through six, are the battery voltage display when charging, and then seven through B, because it goes seven, eight, nine, and then AB, that is the battery for discharging. So this first one is 20%, and then the next one is the 40%, and the 60%, 80%. What that allows you to do is to not have a completely linear battery display. Um, because this is lithium iron phosphate battery, it's relatively linear discharge, so I programmed it just based on five different segments. So my 20% reading is basically the bottom 20% of usable voltage. My 40% is the bottom 40%. Um, for charging, I made it without any accommodations for voltage sag. Lithium iron phosphate batteries specifically are really known for voltage sag, but every type of battery has a certain degree of voltage sag when it's being used. Um, turns out I did not program it with enough accounting for voltage sag while writing. So I'm not gonna change these first five. Um, these are the charging. So charging voltage is consistent. So four is 60% on charge, that's 80% on charge, and then that's 100% on charge. Past 108 volts, 109 volts, it really has no usable range. Um, even on a discharge, really, the 108 is the highest that is anything useful. It's like 3.45 volts per cell. Anything above that lithium iron phosphate is almost non-existent. So this is really just accounting for a little bit of voltage inflation as charging occurs. These next ones are the discharge numbers. So my 20% on discharge is set at 97.6 volts. I would like to, and that is what this number indicates, 97.6, the point is assumed. Um, I like to drop these down just a little lower because when driving, I'd like it to display how much voltage or how much range may be left at a certain degree of voltage sag while cruising, let's say 60 miles an hour. So I'm gonna drop these down just a little bit here. I was experiencing about a three volt decrease at that speed. So I'm gonna just lower this all down by about two more volts because I already accounted for a one or so volt decrease. Um, to change this, you hold this button down. And then you can modify this. I don't need to change this one. I'm gonna leave that decimal in there. I'm just gonna drop this down by a, a couple of volts here. So I'm gonna punch this over to 95. 
Now I'm going to cycle through each of these to get to the next menu. I'm going to drop this down again by two. This is my 40% voltage. Sixty percent here. And then eighty percent remaining voltage. Two point four. And then 100% remaining voltage, and built it down to 105. These next ones are for setting D-boost, um, for charging 0% charging status on this one, which 91 volts is my 0%, and The battery voltage for 0% discharge, I have that a little lower. I'm gonna move that down again, just slightly. Move this to 88, let's drop it down by two again so that my percentages all match. And then this is charging memory percentage. Each number there, the one means 1% according to this documentation that I have. I'm not sure of the benefit of that. I didn't, I didn't change it. And that was the last one that I modified. There were some lines not described in this. Um, realistically to me, all this needs to do is show me the speed, show me the mileage, show me the battery. Uh, the rest of this is all kind of arbitrary. At which point it will reset. And now my 104 reflects my new of uh, calibration, obviously the trade-off that I just made is I am not calibrated at resting, I'm calibrated when driving. So this will hypothetically drop by, I think I said three volts was what I recognized, so it's be about 100 to 101 volts while driving and that will reflect about a half a charge, um, which I've already gone 54 miles on this at highway speeds, and so this gauge should calibrate correctly based on mileage covered um, rather than the sitting mileage. So that's how you program one of these. Um, functionally, the only things that I change are odometer, miles per hour, and then any of the battery calibration there. Obviously got videos for the other elements of programming and um, other systems, electronic systems, and the finishing touches. So check those out, and I will catch you guys next time.